This video was brought to you in part by the supporters of the AMTV Patreon. Thank you. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome to this rather special video. We're going to be taking a look today at my Doctor Who books. I know some of you have probably seen these in the background, I've had a lot of questions, people saying, oh, we want to see what books you've got. So I thought, well, let's uh, delve into the shelf. So our first book today is a, a book simply titled as Doctor Who. Uh, it's written by Mark Campbell. This is the Pocket Essential Doctor Who, and it's got a bunch of Doctor Who buzzwords on the front. Uh, this is basically a little pocket guide to every episode that came out so far, and each of them has like a gist and observations, and Mark Campbell himself gives each of them a score. And I actually read this quite a lot as a kid. There's no pictures or nothing, but um, you get pretty, you get a decent amount of detail. I've heard there are some inaccuracies. So look at this. This is the uh, Myth Makers. It tells you how many episodes there are, the name of them for those that have it. You got the cast, the crew, the broadcast, the the gist, so the TARDIS lands in ancient Greece during the Trojan War. Observations and a verdict. So he gives the Mythmakers 7 out of 10. Very nice. So yeah, I used this a lot. Uh, I got it in 2005 when it came out. And again, the internet, it was around, but I wasn't using it much as a nine-year-old kid back in the day. So this was actually a really cool little reference guide. It probably doesn't have much uh, use nowadays, uh, just because, again, mainly you have the internet. And there's, there's much better reference books out there. But this one has a special place. You can tell it's a bit beaten up. There's a lot of creases, but it's uh, it's because I got a lot of use out of it as a kid. This one's a lot more recent. This is Doctor Who Adventures in Lockdown. So the past year, there's been a lot of Doctor Who short stories written, as you can see on the left, by people like Chris Chibnall, Paul Cornell, Russell T Davies, Neil Gaiman, Mark Gattis, etc. And it was re it was done for children in need. So it's all all the stories are in here. And what was cool about this is you have a uh, artwork each story for from different artists as well some artists you might recognize if you're in the doctor who community space on places like twitter there's some really great stuff there this one's quite affordable as well you can get it in most uh, places and again all proceeds are going to children in need so it's definitely worth a read this one's quite cool this is terry nation the man who invented the daleks this is basically terry nation's autobiography written by alwyn w turner and it's an, actually a really fascinating portrait on Terry Nation's life. Obviously not just the fact he made the Daleks, it goes through all of his life. Because he also created things like Survivors and Blake 7, which sometimes gets overlooked by the fact he invented the Daleks. It's a nice chunky uh, softback. There's a, there's pictures in here as well along the way. I always love that in autobiographies when they're broken up with some pictures. And it's just really good. So if you want to know more about the Welshman who made the Daleks, you should check this out. Another good autobiography read is this, JNT, The Life and Scandalous Times of John Nathan Turner by Richard Marson. Again, if you want a great portrait on uh, John Nathan Turner, then this book is definitely worth the read. I believe this one has pictures in it as well, some pictures I'd never seen of John Nathan Turner before, that's for sure. Good way to break it up as well. And I know we have the documentary on the season 26 set about JNT, but if you want a, a book version of that, or uh, that's probably got even more detail, then definitely check this one out. These next two sort of go hand in hand for me. So you've got the TARDIS handbook and you've got the Dalek handbook. These were released during the Matt Smith era. I think the TARDIS one was 2010. I want to say the Dalek one was 2011, though I could be wrong on that. And these are just great, uh, very informative books about each of their respective subjects. So the TARDIS obviously has a lot of information about the Doctor's titular time machine, which is really cool. And the Dalek handbook has a lot of information about the Daleks. Um, I bought these as a uh, an early teenager. Uh, they're actually pretty informative. They're really good. Good for that sort of age range. Adults might enjoy them as well, but these were great resources for me as a teen looking into the wider universe of Doctor Who, if you like. So, yeah, good purchases. There's a bit more of a recent one. This is Doctor Who, A Brief History of Time Lords. Uh, I got this as a birthday gift and it says, The Great and Good of Gallifrey, the High Council, the Inner Council, the Cardinals of the Academy, the Old Men in Funny Hats, and all are all determined that you should never read this book. Ooh, mysterious. So uh, this is obviously pre-Timeless Children, so that won't be in there. But, you know, it's a neat little book. Here's a good old classic. This is Whoology, Doctor Who, the official 
Miscellany from 2013. I want to say they did a reprint later on. Uh, but, I mean, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It is a miscellany full of facts and information about Doctor Who and even the wider universe as well. Uh, there's probably updated versions of this or versions of a similar book that probably provide more up-to-date information. But back in 2013, the 50th anniversary, when the show was like at the peak of its public profile that year, this was a good read. Here's another good one. This is TARDIS Type 40 Instruction Manual. This was a birthday gift and indeed does have a lot of information again about the TARDIS. In fact, it's probably a more up-to-date version of that TARDIS handbook one I just showed you, so it's nice to keep up to date. This is another birthday gift from this year, actually. This is Doctor Who Exhibitions, The Unofficial and Unauthorised History by Bedwia Gullidge, I think that's how you pronounce it. This was a really interesting book to me, and I haven't read it just yet, but it basically, as it says, documents a history of Doctor Who Exhibitions, so in places like Blackpool, which I went to as a kid, uh, it's by Telos Publishing, who do a lot of great Doctor Who uh, reference books. So uh, I'm really excited to delve into this. And if you're into exhibitions or that sort of angle, then you should definitely inquire about looking into this too. Here's another one I got this year. This is the classic Doctor Who DVD compendium. Now, this actually came out, I think, in 2014. And it's basically, well, it's compiled by Paul Smith. It's basically a tome of information about the Doctor Who DVD releases from the very first one being the Five Doctors in 1999 all the way up until I want to say they included the Web of Fear and the Moonbase, like the 2014 stuff. Um, it's a very, like, you know, informative book, jam-packed with information. It's very much a factual book, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. If you don't want, like, a very factual book, I'd stay away from this one. But after, for some reason, not getting it for seven years, I'm very excited to have this in the collection. And I actually think it might make a good reference book for a future history video about the DVD range. We'll see. Here's a cool one. This is Who Grafica, an infographic guide to space and time. I'd say in some ways this is very um, similar to Whoology, except this is all, all these facts are presented in like a graphic style. I really like this sort of graphic stuff. I don't know, I've always, I always like that section of art in class and stuff and telling facts or information through this style is all what I'm into. So yeah, if you're into that sort of style, a bit more artsy, a bit more quirky, then Who Grafica is definitely one to go to. I'm pretty sure there's a hardback version of this as well, but you can also get it as a paperback. Here's one I'm really proud to own. This is a Script Doctor, the inside story of Doctor Who from 1986 to 1989, written by Andrew Cartmel, who was the script editor for the Seventh Doctor era. A really insightful book about, well, as it says, how how the series was run back then in sort of its last days of the classic era. It's got an introduction by Stephen Moffat, as you can say at the top. And I actually have this, uh, where is it? I actually have this signed by Andrew himself. I met him at a Comic-Con and uh, bought it off him and he signed it. I believe there is a revised version of this that came out. I think it was in limited quantities, though, so uh, you might have to look secondhand. But if, if you can still get it new, definitely do it, especially if you're into, like, the classic series, The Seventh Doctor's Era, how the show initially came to an end. It's a fantastic read. Got another biography. This is Peter Davison. Is there life outside the box? An actor despairs, which is a nice witty take on an actor prepares. This is a great book. Again, obviously, this is written by Peter himself, and it's a really fascinating insight into... Uh, well, his life, I suppose. On the back there, you can see his stamp with his face on it, which I think was around the 50th anniversary. But yeah, if you like Peter Davison, you want to know more about his life career, get this book. Here's a fun one, Doctor Who Time Lord Fairy Tales. This is the hardback edition. It's got a story, I think, with all the Doctors leading up to the 12th. And I believe you can get this in like an individual book format where they've it's all in like a special box and they're all got colored spines and stuff which is really cool but it's nice to own it in some form and this cover's gorgeous as well so yeah fun little read so these next books are some of the most essential books i had as a kid and these were the big guns starting off with this doctor who monsters and villains now i would argue i put a case for this as being one of, if not the most important Doctor Who book ever released. It was released in 2005, just after Series 1. It had some new monster stuff, but most importantly, it had stuff on classic monsters like the Ice Warriors. And in particular, um, it had information about the Cybermen, who at that point in 2005 we'd never seen. So for new fans, this was such, such an important release in getting us interested in the classic stuff. But they didn't just stop there. Oh no, they, they found their formula and they ran with it. So after Monsters and Villains... In 2006, you had uh, Aliens and Enemies with the Cyber Controller on the front. The, the style and the format is the same, although different monsters are covered. It finishes off Series 1 and kicks off Series 2 being covered here as well, which is neat. And no, they didn't stop there. Time for the, the requel now. You've got Doctor Who Creatures and Demons. 
with Martha on the front there. So as you can imagine, same format, same style. It finished Series 2 and uh, covered the first half of Series 3. So three books, I mean, that's good for any series. Well, guess what, Paisanos? They made a fourth one. Doctor Who, Starships, and Space Stations. You can tell they were really stretching with the titles now. Um, I believe it finished off Series 3 and kick-started Series 4. And uh, uh, finally... And finally, to round it off, we had this, Companions and Allies. So focusing more on the Companions, which was a nice change of pace from going from the from the monsters of the show. It was really nice. Nice way to round it off, and I think it finished Series uh, 4. I can't remember if it covered the specials in 2009. I'd have to double-check that. I believe there was, like, a compilation of all of these books jammed together, released called, I think I want to say it was the Ultimate Monster Guide, or something like that. Uh, so you could probably get that, but these were great reference books. And as I say, in particular, uh, Monsters and Villains, uh, my case for one of the most important Doctor Who books ever released. So let's keep things where we left off with uh, this book right here. This is Doctor Who, The Women Who Lived, which is uh, Amazing Tales for Future Time Lords, written by Crystal D and Simon Gurria. Uh, this is a fab book, just chronicle I uh, can't even speak, just detailing some of the, the key women throughout Doctor Who, obviously. There's Jodie herself on the cover, you've got Missy and Osgood, River, Idris, the humanoid TARDIS, if you like, Donna, Clara, Bill, Yaz, and Amy, which is great. And now, this came out in 2018, and I can't remember if this actually came out before Series 11 started, but nevertheless, I got this uh, recently, and I mean, there's Jo, bless her heart. This is just a great book chronicling many women throughout the Doctor Who universe. So if you want some good, if you want some good written things here and good like bios of characters and stuff like that, you should definitely go and check this book out. There's some great artwork in it as well. Yeah, a lovely hardback too. This one here is quite recent. This is The Daleks, the ultimate collector's edition of the classic 1960s strip. So this is a bookazine that came out this year. Uh, I got it for my birthday, actually. And what this is, is it is basically the entire 1960s Dalek comic strip uh, all packaged together in this here bookazine. Now, I haven't read the 60s comic strip just yet, like I hadn't read it before. I know a lot of people love it. They say it's like classic Dalek action. I mean, it's in full colour, you get new designs, you get a version of the Emperor Dalek. It looks really, really cool. And um, suffice to say, I haven't actually trolled through it yet. I, I will do. I'm I think I'm saving it for like a journey. I enjoy reading comics on a journey, but very excited to get stuck in with this one. Next up, we've got a book from the 1980s. This is Doctor Who, the TARDIS, Inside Out, written by John Nathan Turner, who was the producer at the time. You've got the first six Doctors on the cover there, which gives you an inkling as to when this came out. The illustrations are by Andrew Skilleter, who did a lot of stuff for the uh, Target novelizations. And this is basically just a guide to uh, the TARDIS, if you like, as it says. Some monsters as well, some great artwork there. Is that John Nathan Turner coming out the TARDIS? Oh, absolutely. You've got a Dalek there and canine. Some really lavish uh, artwork for the, for the mid-1980s. It's quite a short book. As you can see, it's very thin. I think I got this as part of a, like a bundle of, of Who books. But, you know, if you like to see what was coming out in the 80s for fans, then it's worth a little look in. Yes, Jamie, this is a big one. This is Doctor Who, The Legend Continues. Five decades of time travel. Now, this came out in 2005. It's an updated version of a 2003 book called The Legend, which chronicled the first 40 years of Doctor Who, and this one was updated to feature, as you can see there, the ninth Doctor. It's even got the current logo. I got this, I can't remember whether it was Christmas 2005 or just before, but as you can see, it is very well worn. There's creases, there's sellotape everywhere. And I'm going to try and show what this is. This is basically a big encyclopedia of every televised Doctor Who story released up until that point, going backwards there. Uh, but of course, right near the end, if I can get it on here, you do also have the Ninth Doctor stuff. There's Empty Child and the Doctor Dances. So it is completely updated. It's also got some information on the wilderness years and other little factoids in there as well. But, you know, for 2005, outside of the internet, for me, this was the most comprehensive uh, Doctor Who book there was ever going to be. So I've had this signed by Paul McGann, the lovely Eighth Doctor, and I have also had this signed by, where is he? Where is he? There he is, by the Sixth Doctor as well. So that's pretty cool. As I said, oh God, this is heavy. It's a very big old book. It's like 500 pages, you know, it's it's huge, but it is a very special uh, piece of Who memorabilia to me. And despite that it's battered and it's bruised, 
I'm going to hold on to it for as long as I can. Here's another big bit of chunk. This is Doctor Who Impossible Worlds, a 50-year treasury of art and design. And that is practically what it says on the tin. Going to try and open it. Ooh, look, a robot spider. This is just a great book about art and design from the show's, well, then 50-year history coming out around 2013, 2014, I think. You've got a whole host of different uh, art pieces you can look at here. And even at the end, there's an envelope. But what's in the envelope, you say? Okay, this isn't all of them, but you basically get some gorgeous art cards of like art design. So that's the Zygon Cave from uh, the... Well, it says Invasion of the Zygons or the Zygon Invasion. So, okay, this came out around 2015. You've got the War Room from Day of the Doctor. That's pretty cool. You've got Arcadia from Day of the Doctor. You have uh, the 11th Doctor's second TARDIS, or I guess that was early design sketches for it. And, uh, oh, you've also got plans for a, a sonic screwdriver, the 11th Doctor Sonic. There's more of these in here as well, more than what I'm just showing you. Like, you've got the Gallifrey and maps. But if you're a fan of art and design of Doctor Who, this book is an absolute must. Now, this big boy was one of my favourites. This is uh, Doctor Who, The Vault, Treasures from the First 50 Years. And, uh, yeah, this was released in 2013. I got my dates right there. Because this was basically sort of like The Legend Continues. But not a comprehensive uh, look at every single story, more like a comprehensive look at every single uh, year up until that point. So I've just opened there onto 1982, uh, taking over the asylum, filled with great uh, loads of pictures, like, like there's, well there's Barusa from the Five Doctors, very great articles in here, like you got articles, you've got illustrations, promotional stuff. There's just loads of great content here. Oh, my favorite, the Candyman. And it goes all the way up until 2013. So uh, yeah, basically a great read. It's something you can find for dirt cheap now, like there's loads of these flying about. So if you can find yourself a copy, I'd still definitely, it's, it's worth reading. If you enjoy reading, then I think you'll get a fair bit out of Doctor Who The Vault. And I hope that they do an updated version for the 60th anniversary. Next up, we have Doctor Who, The Secret Lives of Monsters. And I think you can tell when this book came out, but going by the front cover, it says includes exclusive removable artwork. So you've got a Cyberman, an Ice Warrior, a Dalek, and a Weeping Angel with lovely Pete Capaldi on the front. Uh, this one I haven't delved into as much, but from the looks of it, it's a lovely hardback book. I guess it's trying to replicate what like the Monsters and Villains series did, but update it somewhat. I mean, it's a lot bigger. There's a lot more pictures, a lot more information. But again, as I say, oh, look, more removable artwork. What's... So it'll be like the Impossible Worlds one. There'll be more different art cards in there. So if art cards are your thing, this is another book you need to you need to pick up. I personally prefer the... I don't want to say simplicity, but it was. It was like more um, the more simple take of the original like Monsters and Villains book. This one's cool too. Definitely more in depth if that's your sort of thing, but I like a bit of simplicity. Do these keep getting bigger or is it just me? This is Doctor Who The Illustrated Adventures, a lovely hardback book here. And uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, oh, look, City of Death, my favorite story. <laughs> Sadly, that's a joke. Um, yeah, this one I think just goes through different different stories. Not all of them, just picks. I think, I think it's a hundred of them and illustrates them. Uh, with cool new artwork from loads of different artists, which I think is really neat. Going all the way up, what's the most recent one? There's Robot of Sherwood, 89. I'm trying to remember when this came out. Oh, Heaven Sent, the masterpiece. is 90. He Hell Bent, 97, 98, 99. 100 is Smile. Okay, so I'm going to say this came out around 2017-ish. That would be, that'd be pretty good. So I actually quite like the idea of this sort of going through Doctor Who history, illustrating different parts of it. It's really neat. Um, again, there might, if, this might not be for you, but I really like this sort of style. Okay, next up we have this, Doctor Who The Target Book. This is a history of the t Doctor Who Target Books. Um, I do have a lot of Target Books, obviously you haven't seen them yet, that might have to come in a future video. But yes, this is THE Target Book, as it were. This is like a definitive history of them and what they, what they were, what they meant to the Doctor Who fandom back in the 70s, 80s and 90s. You've got examples of like art, artwork from the original artist, some Texas artwork, some promo artwork as well. You basically get a great history, and I love the history. And also near the end, there you go, you get a copy of every Doctor Who Target book that they ever put out. It's on this really nice glossy paper. It's a great read as well. I enjoy plowing through it over the Christmas period. It's somewhat difficult to find, I think, in hardback these days. I think you can get a paperback because it was it did come out... 
I want to say like 2007, so quite some time ago, but it's by the guys at Telos Publishing who've done some other books you've seen, and it is just phenomenal. I'm sure fans of a certain age will recognise this. This is Doctor Who, a celebration, two decades through time and space. You know, we've seen 40th anniversary books, 50th anniversary books, not 20th. So this came out in 1983 by Peter Haining. This is the hardback version. I can't remember if that was the original or the paperback was first. You've got this lovely artwork of balloons coming out of the TARDIS, which has sort of become quite iconic in the space. I've seen it used for a lot of things outside of this. Very texty, very texty. There are pictures. I think they're all in black and white. Remember, colour printing was still expensive back then. But it, um, I guess, you know, for a Doctor Who fan in 1983, this was a great summation of where the programme had come up until this point. Does it hold much use now? Probably, I mean, you know, you could argue all these books don't hold as much use now that the internet's about. But from a literary standpoint and a historical standpoint, I think this one's really cool to have around. If I ever wanted to sort of get a 1983 perspective on where the show was, then I'd, I'd turn to this. And following on from 20 years, we've got Doctor Who 25 Glorious Years, also by Peter Haining. So this would have come out in 1988 to celebrate the uh, 25th anniversary of the show. And I'm trying to remember if this was more along the lines of a similar thing. I mean, printing. Oh, we do have we do have some color of some companions there. Seems to be a mix. What does that say? Who are these doctors? But I think along the lines, it's very similar to the celebration one. It's written by the same author. I'd like to think the text elements are different. It'd be a little lazy if they just, you know, copied the same text. But somehow I don't think they did that. So again, if you want a perspective from 1988, a time when the TV show wasn't doing the best, it'd be interesting to see what you make of this. Here's a tall one, but a thin one. This is Doctor Who Time Frame, the illustrated history and uh, it pretty much gives you what it says on the tin this is illustrations throughout doctor who history it reminds me of the vault you know similar target covers promotional listings radio times covers uh, this came out in the 1990s i can't remember when i think it was like 93 94 so again these days it's more of a perspective thing you know i think a lot of books have come out that have done this obviously to a more comprehensive and more in-depth uh, level but for a 90s book it's pretty good and the last book on this list, by virtue of it being the tallest, is Doctor Who Cybermen, uh, which is written actually by David Banks, who plays the cyber leader you can see on the front cover in the 80s. Now, I got my copy from the Doctor Who exhibition in Blackpool all the way back in 2006 when that was still open. And this book was the coolest, man. It originally came out in 1988, but it gives you a very in-depth, very in-depth comp uh, comprehensive history of the Cybermen, uh, their TV adventures, like a timeline of their Cybermen's evolution. There's some gorgeous uh, color artwork in here, like demonstrating their adventures and their rise, their experiences with the Doctor. It's just, I mean, look at that from Tomb of the Cybermen. Look at that. It's just a really cool, really in-depth book. Obviously, some of this has been contradicted now. I believe some of this offers a, a uh, well, an offering of how the Cybermen got their genesis. I know this has been obviously attempted in Big Finish and in the TV show itself. But again, think back to 1988 or like me when I was a 10-year-old reading this. This was a pretty magical book. So I would actually highly recommend you get a copy of Cybermen if you're interested. So those are all the books you can see on the shelf, but there are a couple of books that were actually too tall for the shelf that uh, that you couldn't see. So I'm going to show them here for you now. The first one, oh God, is this Doctor Who the Hooniverse, a very heavy book, The Untold History of Space and Time. This one's quite weird. It's got the confession dial on the front and um, you've got some lovely artwork, Scaroff ship. Um, I think this tells it from a more, like, story-based. I don't think it's as factual. I think it's more of a story perspective. I'm yet to plow through this book. There's some gorgeous artwork for you. Um, and I will one day... Oh, God, I'm saying it is really heavy as well to hold with one hand, just, just FYI. Uh, but, yeah, if you like sort of the history of Doctor Who told to you from, like, a storytelling perspective rather than a factual perspective, then this one's a good one for you. Retreating to the 90s, we have Doctor Who companions and again is this color photos or is it okay a lot of black and white it's all oh no some color mix of black and white and color all the companions up to that point and this was in like a series of books you can see there they also did books on the 60s the 70s and soon to be the 80s as well there was lots of different doctor who related media coming out in the 90s despite the tv show being dead which is honestly quite incredible when you think about it so uh, again yeah there's probably been more comprehensive books these days but if you want the og here's the one for you and last but not least what you couldn't see out of shot was this the doctor who annual 
2006. Now, I have a funny history with the annuals. This was the first one I got for, you know, like Christmas 2005. I got every annual up until I want to say 2013, and then I stopped. And or I don't have all those other annuals anymore. I had to get rid of them, you know, save space and stuff. And I don't have any classic annuals either. But this one I kept around because I think this is a very important book, especially for me. I mean, in the beginning, it's not very big. But in the beginning, you actually get a little detailed semi-history of the Doctors. And bear in mind, this is just after Eccleston left. And th they weren't really pushing the classic series that much. So this was such an invaluable guide uh, to me. You have some annual features as well. You know, you've got like a word search and there's comics in there. But this book is also noted, meet the Doctor, for having the first appearance of Sally Sparrow from Blink. And I'm trying to find her, her little story. There you go. What I did on my Christmas holidays by Sally Sparrow. Uh, written by Stephen Moffat, and obviously that's a very different looking Sally Sparrow to the one we got. But yeah, I remember reading this a lot, and then when Blink happened, I was like, whoa, mind blown. Then you've got a good image of them there, an advert for DWM and the Puzzle Solution. So, and I always love this image of the TARDIS. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's so good. So yeah, even though it's a bit battered and, you know, all the other annuals came out after it, I do love this one because, again... It pushed for introducing people to the classic series of the show. It gave us great little short stories, including the Sally Sparrow one I mentioned. So it holds a very special place. And I think, um, well, I hope not to get rid of it. We're going to be looking at Doctor Who The Complete History. This was a part works that started in 2015 and I believe wrapped up in early 2019, uh, chronicling the making of and the history of every Doctor Who story right from the beginning all the way up until the end of Peter Capaldi's time as the 12th Doctor. There is 90 books in total, and of course, I'm, I'm not going to go in depth on each one because we would literally be here for hours and hours and hours, but I thought as part three, I would take you through each one, show you what the front cover looks like, what stories it covers, and maybe tell you a bit about the series as we go. So starting at the very beginning, uh, with volume one, which is obviously William Hartnell. This covers the first two stories. Now, this wasn't actually the first book released. Part of what they did with these is they would release them not in chronological order necessarily. I think actually the first book was one of the David Tennant ones over here. I think it was a series three book. So yeah, this wasn't actually the first one released, but I kind of like that. You know, it reminded me of the DVD releases and such where they'd sort of release them in any order they wanted to, I suppose. And volume two is more First Doctor action here. You've got Inside the Spaceship or The Edge of Destruction. You've got Marco Polo and you also have the keys of Marinus and the Aztecs too. So that's volume two. Volume three uh, finishes off season one. So you've got The Sense Rights, The Reign of Terror and Planet of Giants. Volume four covers The Dalek Invasion of Earth, The Rescue, The Romans and The Web Planet. A good string of stories there from... Season 2. Season, uh, volume 5, sorry, covers The Crusade, The Space Museum, The Chase, and The Time Meddler. Volume 6 covers Galaxy 4, Mission to the Unknown, The Myth Makers, and The Daleks' Master Plan. Volume 7 covers The Massacre of St. Bartholomew's Eve, The Ark, The Celestial Toymaker, and The Gunfighters. And Volume 8 covers the rest of it, The Savages, The War Machines, The Smugglers, and The Tenth planet and I should probably say the basic thing about all these books they contain a bit of information about the story they have the production information like how the story was made they have post-production info publicity info uh, uh, transmission info like viewing figures which is why I use these books on the viewing figure series a lot of the uh, facts I get in that series are from these books they are such a valuable resource and also things like merchandise and cast lists so it's pretty cool so that was Hartnell he had eight volumes to his name so moving on to Troughton now so you have Volume 9, which is Power of the Daleks, the Highlanders, the Underwater Menace, and the Moonbase. Volume 10, which is the Macro Terror, the Faceless Ones, Evil of the Daleks, and Tomb of the Cybermen. Volume 11, which is the Abominable Snowmen, the Ice Warriors, the Enemy of the World, and the Web of Fear. Volume 12, Fury from the Deep, the Wheel in Space, and the Dominators. You have Volume 13, which is the uh, Mind Robber, the Invasion, and the Crotons. And volume 14, which is The Seeds of Death, The Space Pirates, and The War Games. That concludes Patrick Troughton's run of books. There are six books for him. Moving into John Pertwee with volume 15, which is Spearhead from Space, Doctor Who and the Silurians, and The Ambassadors of Death. Volume 16 is Inferno, Terror of the Autons, The Mind of Evil, and The Claws of Axos. Volume 17 is Colony in Space, The Demons, or The Daemons, and Day of the Daleks. Volume 18 
is The Curse of Peladon, The Sea Devils, The Mutants, and The Time Monster. Volume 20 is The Three Doctors, Carnival of Monsters, and Frontier in Space. S Volume 21 is Planet of the Daleks, The Green Death, and The Time Monster. And Volume 22 is Invasion of the Dinosaurs, Death of the Daleks, The Monster of Peladon, and Planet of the Spiders, thus concluding John Pertwee's time. So he got seven books, so you've got eight, six, and seven. And kicking off Tom Baker, there's a lot of books to get through here, as you can see. Volume 22 is Robot, The Ark in Space, and The Sontaran Experiment. Volume 23 is Genesis of the Daleks, Revenge of the Cybermen, and Terror of the Zygons. Volume 24 is Planet of Evil, Pyramids of Mars, The Android Invasion, and The Brain of Morbius. Volume 25 is The Seeds of Doom, The Mask of Mandragora, and The Hand of Fear. Volume 26 is Deadly Assassin, The Face of Evil, The Robots of Death, and The Talons of Wang Chiang. Volume 27 is Horror of Fang Rock, The Invisible Enemy, Image of the Fendal, and The Sunmakers, which is what I've been reading recently. Volume 28 is Underworld, The Invasion of Time, and The Reboss Operation. This is the most recent book I've been reading. I have read all these before, but this is the most recent one I'm rereading, because by the time you're seeing this, ooh, I've got to do forward thinking now, either season 15 or 16 of the Viewing Figure series is out, so yeah, I've been reading a lot on, on this era recently. Volume 29 is The Pirate Planet, The Stones of Blood, and The Androids of Tara. Volume 30 is The Power of Kroll, The Armageddon Factor, and Destiny of the Daleks. Volume 31 is The City of Death, Creature from the Pit, Nightmare of Eden, and The Horns of Naimon. Volume 32 is The Leisure Hive, Megloss, and Full Circle. And Volume 33 is The Remainder of the Era, State of Decay, Warrior's Gate, The Keeper of Traken, and Logopolis. So that concludes Tom Baker's mammoth seven-year run on the show, and that, believe, I believe, totals at 12 books. 12 books, man. And also, let's just take a minute to see, obviously, when you put them all in a line, you get all the different Doctors lined up here, which I think is really cool, and the TARDIS as well. I'll probably talk about why Jodie isn't here, uh, which is a shame, but maybe they'll fix that one day. All right, moving on to Peter Davison now. Volume 34 is Castrovalva, Four to Doomsday, and Kinder. Volume 35 is The Visitation, Black Orchid, Earthshock, and Time Flight. Volume 36 is Ark of Infinity, Snake Dance, and the Mordron Undead. Volume 37 is Terminus, Enlightenment, The King's Demons, and The Five Doctors. Volume 39 is Warriors of the Deep, The Awakening, and Frontios. And Volume 39 is Resurrection of the Daleks, Planet of Fire, and The Caves of Androzani. Quite quick when compared to Tom Baker, isn't it? Only six books there. But now one of the shortest runs, poor Colin Baker, who only has uh, three books here. So start with Volume 40, which is The Twin Dilemma, Attack of the Cybermen, and Vengeance on Varos. Volume 41 is The Mark of the Rani, The Two Doctors, Time Lash, and Revelation of the Daleks. And of course, all of Season 23, The Trial of a Time Lord, is in Volume 42. From three books to four now with Sylvester McCoy. So you've got Volume 43 here, which is Time and the Rani, Paradise Towers, Delta, and the Bannerman. Volume 44 is Dragonfire, Remembrance of the Daleks, and The Happiness Patrol. Volume 45 is Silver Nemesis, Greatest Show in the Galaxy, and Battlefield. And volume 46 is Ghostlight, The Curse of Fenric, and Survival, bringing it to the end of the main classic series. Volume 47 uh, solely covers the TV movie, because of course there's so much to the production of this story and getting it on air that of course it was going to have a whole book to itself, and I'm quite glad it does actually, definitely deserved it. Coming to the end of the shelf now, Chris Eccleston has three books as the Ninth Doctor. You've got Rose, The End of the World, and The Unquiet Dead to kick off. You have Aliens of London, World War Three, Dalek, The Long Game, and Father's Day. And finishing off series one is The Empty Child, The Doctor Dances, Boomtown, and Bad Wolf and the Parting of the Ways, which is volume 50. And then you've got two tenant books on this side here. The first one obviously kicks off with The Christmas Invasion, New Earth, and Tooth and Claw. And volume 52 is School Reunion, Girl in the Fireplace, Rise of the Cyberman, The Age of Steel, and The Idiot's Lantern. As you can see, David Tennant has quite a lot of books, so let's crack on. You've got Volume 53, which is uh, The Impossible Planet, The Satan Pit, Love of Monsters, Fear Her, and Army of Ghosts, and Doomsday, finishing off Series 2 there. Volume 54 is The Runaway Bride, uh, Smith and Jones, and The Shakespeare Code, 
volume 55. Now this, this is actually the very first book that was released in this series. This has Gridlock, Daleks in Manhattan, and Evolution of the Daleks, and The Lazarus Experiment in 42. So this was the one people picked up in, I want to say, summer or September of 2015. It was around the time Series 9 was airing on TV. And uh, yeah, it, I mean, it just it was a great insight, great place to start as well. Good mix of stories there to get people hooked and interested, I would argue. So then volume 56 is Human Nature, Family of Blood, Blink, Utopia, and The Sound of the Drums and Last of the Time Lords, finishing off season, season, bloody hell, series three. Then you've got volume 57, which is Voyage of the Dam, Partners in Crime, and The Fires of Pompeii. You've got volume 58, which is Planet of the Ood, The Sontaran Stratagen and the Poison Sky, The Doctor's Daughter, and The Unicorn and the Wasp. And then you have this one, which is Science in the Library, Forest of the Dead, Midnight, and Turn Left. Love the artwork, by the way, on the front of these. And then you've got Stolen Earth, Journey's End, and the next Doctor. We're getting there to the end of Tenant. You've got uh, Planet of the Dead and the Waters of Mars. And finally, Volume 62, which culminated with just the end of time. That's right, the end of time got its very own book dedicated to it, which is really quite something. So yeah, that rounds off the David uh, Tennant era of these books. And like Tom Baker, there is 12 books. My goodness, 12 books to read through. But look at Matt Smith, he's equally got as many. So let's start with Volume 63, which is The Eleventh Hour, The Beast Below, and Victory of the Daleks. You have Volume 64, which is Time of the Angels, Flesh and Stone, Vampires of Venice, and Amy's Choice. You've got Volume, if I can get it, 65, which is Hungry Earth, Cold Blood, Vincent and the Doctor, and The Lodger. You've got Volume... It's hard to get out. Volume 66, which is a chunky one. You've got Pandorica Opens and The Big Bang. You've got Christmas Carol and The Impossible Astronaut and uh, Day of the Moon. Volume 67, which is Curse of the Black Spot, The Doctor's Wife and The Rebel Flesh and The Almost People, everyone's favourite two-part story. Uh, volume 68, which is A Good Man Goes to War, Let's Kill Hitler and Night Terrors. Volume 69, which is The Girl Who Waited, The God Complex and Closing Time. Volume 70, which is The Wedding of River Song, The Doctor, Widow in the Wardrobe, and Asylum of the Daleks. Volume 71, which is Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, A Town Called Mercy, and The Power of Three. Volume 72, which is Angels Take Manhattan, The Snowmen, and The Bells of St. John. Volume 73, which is The Rings of Akaten, Cold War, Hyde, and Journey to Center of the TARDIS. Volume 74, which is The Crimson Horror, Nightmare in Silver, and The Name of the Doctor. And finally, Volume 75, which has uh, The Day of the Doctor, the 50th anniversary, and The Time of the Doctor, which was Matt Smith's last story with us. So yeah, that's a, a lot of volumes as well. I believe it's, he has one more than Tennant. He has 13 books. 13 books for the 11th Doctor. So 11th Doctor fans, you're going to be very happy about this. But now we go on to Capaldi, my favourite, the 12th Doctor. Starting off, of course, with Deep Breath and Into the Dalek for Volume 76. Volume 77 being Robot of Sherwood, Listen and Time Heist. Volume 78, which is The Caretaker, Kill the Moon, A Mummy on the Orient Express. Volume 79, which is Flatline, In the Forest of the Night, and Dark Water, Death in Heaven. And then this one was odd, because Volume 80 is Last Christmas, The Magician's Apprentice, and The Witch's Familiar. So remember, when this series of books started, Series 9 was just going out. So to finally sort of catch up to it whenever they released this was quite, I don't know, it was quite something for me, really, anyway. Volume 81 is before Under the Lake and Before the Flood and The Girl Who Died. Volume 82 is The Woman Who Lived and The Zygon Invasion Slash Inversion. Volume 83 is Sleep No More, Face the Raven and Heaven Sent, the masterpiece. And Volume 84 is everyone's favourite, Hellbent and the Husbands of River Song. And then we're moving on, getting to Series 10. Volume 85 is The Return of Doctor Mysterio and the Pilot. Volume 86 is Smile, Thin Ice and Knock Knock. Volume 87 is Oxygen, Extremis, The Pyramid at the End of the World. Volume 88 is The Lie of the Land, Empress of Mars, and The Eaters of Light. Volume 89 is World Enough and Time, The Doctor Falls, and Twice Upon a Time. So thus rounding off the 12th Doctor's era, and indeed the chronological look at stories so far. And what's Volume 90, you ask? Well, it's basically an appendix. It covers Sharda, Dimensions in Time, The Curse of Fatal Death, and Time Crash. So a lot of like the spin-offs or charity things. I thought that was a really lovely way to end this series as well. So... That is all 90 books there, folks. So I suppose the main question a lot of people have is, if this is meant to be Doctor Who The Complete History, 
Where, oh where, is Jodie Whittaker's spot here? Well, they did release these from 2015 to 2019, so Jodie's era was beginning. However, I think these books all were made, you know, sometime after their episodes aired. They wanted to gather information, like things that happened at the time, such as viewing figures, for example. So there's no excuse by now. They could have definitely made books to cover series 11 and 12 of Jodie's era. I don't know why they didn't pick this back up. I mean, the thing with Partworks is these... Uh, I think you could get them in shops, but I got a subscription. So, for you know, for four years, every two weeks, I would get uh, one of these books, which was great. I loved it. So, um, you know, I, if they did pick it back up, I would definitely jump on it. I would hope they keep the same sort of style, you know, so they continue this artwork with Jody on the side. And um, obviously the same cover, just to give an example, you know, that Doctor Who logo. I know at the minute they're using the modern logo, the current one, on everything. Um, I wouldn't mind as much because it's on the cover, not on the spine. But yeah, I really hope someday that they pick up, even if it's after Jodie leaves, I just hope they pick up this series again in some form because you can't call it Doctor Who The Complete History without missing something, can you? But that is the collection of books. If you're interested in these and want to get them for yourself, obviously they're not being sold new anymore. I think, you know, they're still readily available secondhand, like lots of people are selling them on places like eBay and Facebook. Uh, their worth or their retail price was about £10 a book. So just keep that in mind, you know, make sure you're not getting ripped off by anyone. I'd argue they're not that rare yet. Uh, some books, for some reason, are, go a bit higher in value. But on the whole, yeah, they're about a tenner a book. So anything that or under, you're getting yourself a good deal. So to kick things off, I kept Rose, which is the first story of the revival era of Doctor Who. And it has been novelized by its original writer, Russell T. Davies. And first of all, the covers, you know, they evoke that classic 70s Target style. There's lots of things going on, lots of bright colors. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, why have I kept it? Well, merely because I haven't read it. A lot of these new, these new Who Target releases I've kept because I haven't read. So uh, I've heard that a lot of them as well do expand a lot on the original stuff, even though it's covering Revived Era. So yeah, Rose is going to be great to have. We're going to put that one over there. The next one I have is The Christmas Invasion, which is the first story of the 10th Doctor, originally written by Russell T. Davies, novelized here by the wonderful Jenny T. Colgan. And yeah, again, I've heard great things about this. The Christmas Invasion isn't one of my favorite Christmas specials overall, but I have heard good things about this book. And if you want to hear a chat with Jenny a bit about this book, but also about her wider work, my mate Josh over at the Who New Podcast has done a great chat with her. I highly recommend you go and give that a listen. It's a wonderful chat. The next one is the 50th anniversary, The Day of the Doctor, originally written and novelized here by Stephen Moffat. Again, this apparently adds lots of fine little details, lots of little cute references, I suppose, for, for fans of the show. Like, there's reference to the Peter Cushing Dalek movies in here, which sounds great. And I really do want to dive into it and get stuck in. So, one day I'll get round to that. But, you know, so we've got one of each of the Revival Doctors so far, 9, 10, and 11. The last one I kept of the moderns is Twice Upon a Time, originally written by Stephen Moffat, novelized here by the marvelous Paul Cornell. This is one of my favorite Christmas specials. I love how sort of low-key it is. It's a beautiful ending to the 10th Doctor. The only annoying thing is, you see all the titles, the Doctor Who's on here, have like a shiny gloss to them. This one doesn't. It's just sort of printed on there. And it's the same on the spine as well. So I don't know what was going on here, why it's different. But I, I don't mind it per se. You know, I mean, Target books are notorious for like changing their layout all the time. This isn't exactly a new thing that they've done. But it's a, it's a strange little inconsistency, isn't it? So those are the four modern ones I kept. I know some of you will be thinking, wait, did you not grab any of the new ones that came out this year in 2021? Uh, I do plan to. I do want to read the three Dalek ones. So Resurrection of the Daleks, Revelation of the Daleks, and Dalek itself. I do plan on giving those a read. I'm also probably going to pick up the TV movie version as well. Uh, I'm probably going to pass on things like the Pirate Planet and the Witchfinders and the Crimson Horror. Not that I don't rate those stories. I just don't have a big interest in reading the novelizations of them so yes i'm probably going to pick up three more of those at some point but yeah at the moment these are the modern ones i've still got now to keep with symmetry uh, you know at one point i had nearly all of the target books and so nearly like what 155 56 i have retained four classic target novels and uh, i'll say now they are all from the seventh doctor sylvester mccoy so the first one i want to show you is this survival by rona munro 
uh, who, which is the original author of the TV story as well. I'm sure many of you know this was the final classic Doctor Who story that went out on TV before the show was taken off the air in late 1989. Uh, this cover, first of all, is gorgeous. I love the motifs here with the Doctor Ace, the cheetah people, and the cat. It's wonderful. Um, it's a great TV story, and it's a really great, succinct novelization. Rona Munro novelizes her work beautifully. It's also the 150th Target novel there which basically acknowledges that they're running out of steam because, you know, this was novelized in 1990 and then in the back it basically says, hey, we're running out of stuff to novelize and the show hasn't been renewed at the moment, so we're, we're going to push on. And then it also foreshadows the new adventures as well, published by Virgin. But I highly recommend Survival. It's a great, great read. Uh, next up, I decided to keep the story before, which is The Curse of Fenric, which is 151. Because, of course, you'll know Target novels weren't necessarily published in order, so this came out after Survival in the Target book range. Uh, this is written by Ian Briggs, who again wrote the TV version. And considering Target books are usually between like 100, 126 pages, this one is a bit beefier and it, it, it contains lots more detail. It's a really well fleshed out book. I really enjoyed reading it, and I think you guys will as well. So. Again, these later ones really were allowed to expand a bit and tell more detail, more elaborate stories. Uh, the third one is from season 25. I've kept The Happiness Patrol, um, which is written here by Graham Curry, who again is the original TV author. And I love this story on TV. I think it's so brilliant. One of the most underrated Sylvester McCoy stories. And again, the novelization does it so, so much justice. The The world uh, here is expanded greatly. I think there's uh, much more depth added to the characters. The scenes in the TV version that are already brilliant are even better here. Just, yeah, go and read The Happiness Patrol. It's a really great book. A really great book that does not want to stand up. Hopefully this last one will. And the last Target book I've decided to keep is Remembrance of the Daleks. Now, this is often pointed to as being one of like the, the catalyst points for the start of the Virgin New Adventures. For those who don't know, those New Adventures, original novels, mind you, were more uh, decidedly more adult in their, in their narratives and their content. And Ben Aronovich, who writes this, who is also, again, the TV author, does a wonderful job of taking his script and adding those elements of darkness. There's really great lines in there about, you know, what characters are thinking or feeling at particular moments. It really does lift this script, because, I mean, I love Remembrance. It's one I've seen dozens and dozens of times, and this just lifts it off the page all over again for me. So if I could recommend any, like, one singular target book for you to read, I would definitely recommend Remembrance of the Daleks. And as said, dear viewer, those are the eight books I have retained in my Target library. I know some people be like, it's sacrilege, you got rid of them. But, you know, you got to, things are weird at the minute in society. Got to earn some money here and there. And as I said, I read most of them and I don't think I'd read most of them again. However, these, the classic ones, you know, I'll definitely read again at some point. The modern ones behind there, I need to read and I'll pick up some of the more modern ones. But yeah, if you want to get into Target book collecting, where could I recommend? A check Facebook Marketplace, there's often some people selling there. eBay is a great place to start as well. You can get a lot of the earlier ones for cheap. Uh, the Who Shop, which is a great uh, uh, Doctor Who resource, sells a lot of Target books as well. Just check online. Loads of people will be selling Target books. Indeed, I am as well. And again, if you want to pick up any that's left, I've got about, at the time of recording, about 50 left. Head over to my Twitter. Uh, you Just look for a tweet where I talk about it. There's either a Google document or a full list, and you can see what I've got. And that overall does bring us to the end of the book collection as a whole. I hope you've enjoyed looking at you know, these target books here and also everything that is over on that shelf over there that we looked at in the complete history series of books as well. It's really been a joy taking you through this book collection, just showing you what I've acquired over the years, both back in the day and also now. It's been really good fun. And let me know in the comments what Doctor Who books have you held on to over the years. I'm really curious to know. Also, leave a like on this video as well. Really helps out, as does subscribing to the channel. Subscribing really does help. It really does. And yeah, just thank you once again for looking at my Doctor Who books with me. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. And until the next one, I will see you all next time.